Hello, Marcel here to show you a couple of new features of the new Lucid for 3ds Max build. And the first thing I wanted to show is the new ability to fix cloth vertices, which was not present in previous builds. So if I just create a plane quickly and I assign it a cloth material, if I press simulate, by default the plane will just drop because nothing is forcing it to stay in place. But if I go and between the Lucid modifier and the plane insert a mesh select modifier and then select some vertices, so I'll just select this row over here, this sub-object selection will tell Lucid modifier which vertices are supposed to stay in place and which ones are supposed to move. So if now I simulate it again, you can see that those vertices are staying fixed in one place. And I can do this with uh, many vertices and I can select them at different edges and Lucid modifier is always going to respect my selection. So right now it's not moving because I am fixing it on both sides. But if I, for example, just select this middle row, if I go in and out of simulation, oop, I need to show in the result. So my object will continue simulating. And this applies to animated meshes as well. I have quickly created a scene here, which has a cylinder and the plane, and they're just moving forward. And the plane is actually parented under the cylinder. So this is a child and it's just inheriting the cylinder's transform. And this plane is a cloth object and the cylinder is a convex collision object. So if I just simulate this, you can see that the cylinder moves and the plane kind of acts as a little bit of a cape for the cylinder. And this can be recorded just as before. Uh, and once we have it recorded, you can see that the cloth is actually moving with cylinder and it is colliding with the cylinder as we expected. So this ability to select vertices and having them stay put in one place also applies to inflated objects and not just cloth. So if I take this sphere and I go and mesh select some vertices and I'll just mesh select some random vertices here and then I will make an inflatable object uh, with Lucid. Again, do not forget to use the show and result. Once I simulate, you can see that it's kind of bouncing in one place and it would be kind of interesting to see what kind of results we can get with this for simulating different parts of, of uh, for example, a character where you would want to add bounciness. So we will see how this feature is used. The second new feature I wanted to show is Lucid's particle flow integration, which introduces fluids into this advanced particle management system. It allows spawning, destroying and manipulating Lucid's fluid particles with great control in addition to having them be generated from a predefined volume like before. To start I'm going to go to the particle systems and create a particle flow source object and by default it's just going to give me a good stream of particles and if I go to my particle view I can see that there is a Lucid operator to be found in the depot. If I drag this Lucid operator into the event over here, all the particles, they kind of freeze and uh, they do not move anymore. And the reason for this is because Lucid has taken control over the movement and simulation of these particles. And to start moving the particles, all I have to do is go into the sandbox mode of Lucid. And now as I scroll, you can see that the particles are moving again. And the downward movement is controlled by Lucid's simulation, whereas the forward movement is controlled by the velocity which has been given to the particles from particle flow in the speed action. So this means that particle flow is able to manipulate forces and speed like it does with all the other particles, and Lucid will respect all of these settings and introduce simulation on top of them. Let's create a little box to trap these particles inside, and then we can work on creating a pool of water. So first I'm going to exit the simulation mode and create a new box object. And this is a good time to demonstrate another one of Lucid's collision objects called the sandbox collision. Sandbox collision basically constrains all of the simulation inside the scene and into a, a box. And to add the sandbox object, all you have to do is add the box object and inside the modifier list, you have to create a normal modifier on top of it. This will flip the normals inside of the mesh 
and to see this happen you can go to object properties and check the back face call option and once you do that the last step is to add the static collision object to this box to do this I can press this preset over here to add the lucid modifier with a collision body type so once this is done all of the particles in the scene will be constrained to be within this box and now if I turn on my simulation and start simulating you can see that lucid particles are falling onto the box and this is a pretty bad color to see this so I'm just going to make the box a darker color maybe even black and you can see that the particles are falling onto the box and not really going anywhere below it so the next step is to go into flex settings and configure the parameters for the particles by default they're going to be shapeless and that is because the particle radius is set to zero for particle flow we actually have to change this particle radius to a different value so let's set it to four once I do this and if I simulate again you can see that the particles now are doing something much more interesting and I'm also going to change the sub steps value to 2 so there are a lot fewer sub steps and this is going to make particles not as sticky and uh, much more fluid next I'm going to increase the number of particles that get emitted I'm going to go back to my particle view and in the birth operator instead of 200 let's change the particle number to 2000 and now we have many more particles emitted and let's change the radius of the particles to something like 8 so you can see now they're more fluid like I'm going to need a lot more particles than 2000 to fill this box so I'm going to go ahead and increase this to 20,000 and the lucid simulation speed is quick enough to automatically update my simulation for me so if I simulate now you can see that we are quickly filling up this box and water is behaving as it should let me increase the simulation time length and as I scroll you can see that the water is actually moving inside and it's happening at very interactive rates one other cool thing that we can do is we can see the effect of the emitters position on the box in real time so if I select my emitter and I move it around the box I can see how it changes the simulation pretty much in real time So the next step would be adding something like a blob mesh or any other particle flow helper object to mesh these particles so I can go to my compound objects and create a blob mesh and then I can go and select my particle flow object as one of the blob objects and when I do that it's going to mesh it and create the fluid mesh for me and to right now it actually is creating a mesh that's pretty high in radius and I can fight this by going back to my particle view and decreasing the size of the shape making it something like 5 or 4 and this will uh, change the size of the blob mesh particles another cool thing to do is to change the display setting with particle flow and make it show something like boxes or any other kind of geometry and this is uh, fun to play with and just see what kind of interesting effects you can get out of this and again this is particle flow so you can change the particle sizes you can make them emit from different uh, objects in different ways and you can spawn new particles and add those to simulation it's only limited by your imagination so these are the two new features in the new build in addition to many different bug fixes and improvements thank you very much for watching